Welcome. Here's a little tidbit from geometry. Let me present you with a challenge. I'll give you on a piece of paper a picture of a circle and ask you to find, with, find the center of that circle for me. And the only tools that allow you are a pencil, so you can mark things and draw things, and a piece of paper, another piece of paper. How would you do it? Well, let me give you the answer, but the real challenge is actually explaining why the answer works. Here goes. I claim the first thing to do is just lay your piece of paper across the circle in some way. So, whoops, my paper disappeared. So that the corner of the paper, the 90 degree angle, lies at one point of the circle. Then the other two edges intercept the circle at two positions, which I claim mark off a diameter. And you can actually use the side of the paper then to actually draw that line if you wish. Now, if that's really true, if that dotted red line reads the diameter, then we can just repeat the trick, lay the piece of paper at a different position across the circle, say maybe like this, da da da, and then mark off a second diameter. And voila, where those two diameters intersect, that must be the true center of the circle. Okay, so these are obviously rely on classical results from a geometry course. What's really of interest here is to prove that marking off a 90 degree angle really does correspond to the diameter of the circle. Now, there's really uh, two ways to do it. Most people actually get the converse going first, which is actually not relevant to the problem. It's called Taylor's theorem. It's actually the oldest recorded result in uh, in all of geometry, he claimed that if you get a diameter first, then the angle subtended from the di diameter is 90 degrees. Great, that's correct. In fact, if you want to know a quick way to prove it, if you actually have a situation like this, um, draw uh, the three radii, this must be x, this must be x, this must be y, this must be y, 180 degrees in a triangle, you can chase this through and prove that x plus y must be 90. But that's irrelevant. That's starting off with the diameter and proving you've got 90 degrees. What we're doing is starting with 90 degrees and need to prove that we have a diameter. So how do we prove that? Here goes. Uh, when I present this result to my students, I actually do it as another tactile puzzle. I draw on the board two dots. I imagine they're nails or something on the board. Two tacks. And I give the students a piece of paper, yet again, which has a built-in 90 degree angle, and I ask the following. Take that piece of paper and shove it somewhere up between those two, two uh, tacks and mark where the corner of the paper is. And then do the same thing, take the piece of paper and shove it up there, I, I do it politely of course, at a different angle. And repeat this, take this piece of paper, this 90 degree angle, and position it between the two tacks at various different positions. Then you'll see that those corners of that piece of paper seem to mark out a curve. And if you look closely, most people want to say right off the bat that, that curve is actually a circle. Well, my question is, is it really a circle? How do we know that's a circle? And that's the issue at hand. That is, given the 90 degree angle first, how do we know that is corresponding to the circle? Well, most people would say, if it is a circle, they're going to guess that the center of the circle is the midpoint between those two tacks. So that's radius r, that'd also be radius r. So the challenge to prove that this dotted blue line really is a circle is to say any point on this, this, this shape has the property that its distance to the midpoint is also r. That's what we need to prove. If we can prove that any point on this dotted curve is equidistant from the two tacks, uh, from the midpoint, it's just the midpoint is from the two tacks, then we must have a circle. How do we prove that? Well, let me just draw a cleaner picture for starters. So we're given two fixed points, da da da, radius r, radius r. We're given some curve here, and we're asking if I draw this point here at 90 degrees, is this distance also r, the red dotted line? Well, the trick is to take this picture of a right triangle and rotate it about that midpoint 90 degrees and make another copy of it down here. Now, I claim this red shape really is a rectangle, and it, it follows. If this is angle x here, the rotated triangle has angle matching angle x over yonder. And this is angle dot, this is also angle dot. But there's 108 degrees in a triangle. If I look at the original triangle, 90 plus x plus dot is 180. That tells me x plus dot is 90. That is, x plus dot is 90, x plus dot is 90. I have a rectangle. What do we know about rectangles? The diagonals of rectangles are congruent and bisect each other. I guess we, have to, we would have proved that in a previous shape, uh, episode. So that's r and r. That means the other diagonals are the same length, and it's also bisected, so it must also be r and r, in which case, yes, this point up here is indeed equidistant from the midpoint. In fact, all these points on the circle are equidistant from the midpoint. That is, oh, I said the wrong thing. All points on this curve are equidistant from this midpoint. That curve, therefore, must be a circle. Voila. So if you're given a flower pot outside, I hand you a piece of paper, you know how to find the center of that flower pot. Just take your piece of paper, lay it across, the 90 degrees touch the corners, and now you can mark off a diameter of the flower point, and off you go. Um, 
Archaeologists sometimes run into this sort of problem, and I'm going to leave this as a challenge for you. Suppose you come across in your diggings the segment of a flower pot. That is, all you get is a broken rim of something circular. That's it. You've got an arc of a circle. Not the full circle, just an arc. Maybe it's the arc of a wheel. Maybe it's the arc of a, of a, of a, of a jar or something. The question is, using the very sim simple tools, could you now compute the radius of the circle from which that arc came? Um, you might want a piece of paper, you might want a pencil, you might want a piece of chalk. I might even give you a rule this time so you can actually measure things. How would you work out the radius of a circle from which an arc came? That's all you've got is that arc. Could you even find this, locate the center of the circle? Good challenge. Thanks very much.